Welcome to the review of the Verni V2 Pro, guys. This is a rugged smartphone from Gearbest for around £200. And this is the best rugged phone I have used. I've had a couple of Blackview smartphones, BV6000 and the BV8000 Pro. I've had the Ulephone Armour as well. But this, the Verni V2 Pro, is the best. It's got that balance between rugged smartphone and a normal, typical smartphone. It's thinner than the rest of them. It has got a smaller battery, but it has got great battery life as well. So over the last week, I have submerged it in water. Let's whack it in. Dropped it out the first floor window. Don't break. and I've frozen it. Okay, I think it's had well over four hours. Let's have a look. And it is stuck. And it's frozen. You can see the ice there and ice at the top. And the buttons are frozen stiff. And the Verni V2 Pro has come out on top all the time. That video is up in the card, just up there, so you can check out the the brutal test this phone has been through. So it's a definitely a well-built smartphone, hardened rubber corners to take in the, the impact, which it did mostly when I dropped it the other day. And this side metal, the magnalium, which I mentioned in the unboxing, did get a bit of information off Google. So magnalium is lighter and more workable than aluminium, and is used in making metal mirrors and scientific instruments. There is a stronger material than using aluminium alone. So magnalium on both sides of this smartphone, which is quite a nice touch, I think. Yeah, build quality is excellent. It has LED notification, only one blue light. You can't alter the, the lights, unfortunately, but the notification is there nonetheless. Fingerprint scanner and face ID. You can use both simultaneously. I find on the V2 Pro that the fingerprint sensor unlocks faster, just slightly, like a split second in it, the uh, the fingerprint is slightly quicker than the Face ID. And the Face ID works 95% of the time, or a couple of times where it will say your face recognition uh, or face not found. I'd stick with the fingerprint sensor, it's much more secure as well. Let's get on to the big battery. It has a 6,200 milliamp battery, just like it does on the Verni X. And with it being 6,200 milliamp battery, it can be slimmer than all the other rugged smartphones out there. This is a slimmer device and good battery life. I managed to get the best result was 11 hours and 11 minutes on screen on time. Last full charge, one day, two hours and 42 minutes. So I do manage to get through the whole day. Come night time, it's probably around about 15, 20%. And I'll probably get a couple more hours out of it in the morning, then I'd have to give it on charge. But for me, for battery life, it has to get me for a whole day, and I'm happy. So 11 hours and 11 minutes is very, very good. And the other times before that was uh, 10 hours, uh, 27 minutes, and 10 hours and 41 minutes. So around the 10, 11 hour mark. And I was gaming um, some of the time, like Flick Shoot, been using a lot, but I, ha I use WhatsApp heavily, YouTube quite a lot, Facebook, as you can see, uh, Flick Shoot was on that for about an hour or so, one of the games, and score match at the bottom as well. So I have had my mix of gaming and general use, but I'm very happy with the battery life. I do say it is the best rugged smartphone that I have used, but there is a downside, and that's the camera. Uh, I think the camera is quite, I can't even say it's average, it's quite poor at times. Um, 
the dual rear and the dual front. Uh, I think when you cover the lens, as you can see here, you can cover the bottom lens. You do get a message saying, make sure you're not covering the lens and you'll see the blur stop working as well. When I remove my finger, it takes a couple of seconds and the blur reappears. So that second lens is definitely doing something. Um, it is removing and adding the blur when you remove your finger or, or put it on there, but it's not doing a very good job. And as you can see, the, um, the bokker effect on that picture there is rubbish. It's not very good at all, as you can see in these, uh, in these photos. And the V2 Pro also suffers in low light. This was actually in the daytime. The curtains were shut. I was putting my little into sleep in a cot for a nap. And you can see the noise in there is quite, it's quite dreadful, isn't it? Yes, as uh, lighting conditions improve, you can see on these pictures that there is a slight improvement. Um, but when you do pinch zoom in on some of the pictures, um, you can see the noise uh, quite a bit. Who really zooms in on pictures anyway? I mean, yes, it's a good test to see how much uh, noise is in there. But when you're viewing a picture normally, you won't be zo uh, pinching, pinch zooming in anyway. Video quality is average. There's no stabilization at all within the uh, within the smartphone. And me recording the back garden the other day, panning up and panning down. You can see that the, the slight color shifts um, and sort of flickering. Much needed so, rain. On the whole, the camera is is poor. Unfortunately, the camera is poor. I'll leave you with these other few videos, guys, and a few more pictures. I'd like to know your thoughts. This is the, the V2 Pro front facing camera and I mean the room is daylight but the curtain is closed. That's what we've got at the moment, let me open the curtains. A lot brighter. I don't think the V2 Pro camera is very good, especially in low light. Low light conditions, it definitely underperforms. This is acceptable, it's usable, but the camera is definitely a low point on the smartphone. Some rear facing video. So there's no image stabilization at all. It's a bit dark now, and here you can see the noise. A lot of noise. It's quite bad actually. Even some of the, the pictures as well you'll notice. Uh, when it's darker it does introduce a lot of noise. So guys I know uh, some people probably had their doubts on GPS on the on the V2 Pro uh, but I can tell you the GPS is excellent. Accuracy there six foot and a 3D fix. Again, a recording of uh, one of my journeys. The GPS on this phone is on the money and on point. Okay, I'll show you some of the, the bands. Both SIM cards are 4G enabled, so this is SIM card 1. And we go through the LTE bands, 1 to 5, 7 and 8, 12, 17, 19 and 20. 20 is one of the main ones in the UK for 4G, the 800 megahertz network. 34, 38, 39, 40, 41, and that's your lot. You've got North American cellular band and North American PCS band. Band zero, band one. Then SIM two, same again, LTE bands. But not the North American bands on SIM two. Let's do a mobile speed test on 4G. This does support voice over LTE, so V-O-L-T-E. Let's have a look at what we get here. That's decent enough speeds. I'm hoping for a little bit more upload speed. 
But um, there you go, 4G EE in the UK. So the Bernie V2 Pro is running Android 8.1 as a Helio P23 octa-core CPU, and it's snappy. I've not experienced any major issues in terms of lag or drop in performance or anything like that. Opens up apps pretty well. It's been a very reliable smartphone over the past week. There has been no updates though, uh, no software updates. And to be honest, Verni aren't really renowned for their updates. So this is probably only be this is probably going to be at Android 8.1 and you're probably not going to see any other. I might be mistaken though. Let's go on to gaming guys. This has got the Mali G71 graphics chip for gaming. I've done quite a bit of gaming on this smartphone. I like my little flick shoot football games. I've been playing a lot of them lately. Uh, flick shoot and a couple of other games as well. Have a look at some of the, uh, the gameplay here that you're watching. Doesn't The phone doesn't really get hot. Performs well until we get to um, so we get to PUBG. PUBG has a medium graphic settings. That's the the first setting it gives you when you first uh, boot up the game. As you're in the game, I got a little message saying drop down to um, low graphic settings. So I had to do that. Um, it wasn't the smoothest of gameplay. Part maybe some of the um, mobile data internet connection had some play within that because uh, you can have uh, skipped frames and, and whatnot. And the phone got a little bit warm when playing PUBG because it's quite a, um, a huge game and demands a lot of resources, so it did get quite hot. Uh, but I've definitely played PUBG on. But I've definitely played PUBG on smoother smartphones. Definitely have to run this on low graphics. No, <clears throat> it's me gone. So the display is 2160 by 1080p. It is Corning Gorilla Glass, super hard, super strong. Not a mark or scratch on it, especially after the drop test I did a few days ago. It's an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, and the pinch zoom does work in YouTube. So you can get full maximum coverage on the display. You've got one speaker grill at the top there, which you can cut off the audio quite easy. I think the uh, obviously the rubber rounded corners and the the bottom of it helps to diffuse the audio a lot as well. Audio quality isn't bad at all on the V2 Pro. It does get muffled when water is in it, but it does dry out and um, it's good. It's got a nice level, very, very loud as well. So that pretty much covers the V2 Pro, the best rugged smartphone I have used. Downside is the camera. The camera is quite poor and the camera could definitely be improved and maybe optimized. But overall, it is a very good rugged phone and it will do exactly what you need it would definitely suit the outdoor people, maybe builders, hikers, people who camp a lot, go trekking a lot. Something they're going to need that's going to be durable, be waterproof, not too big, with great battery life, and very good performance. The V2 Pro ticks all of them boxes. It even has NFC, which does work, and has Google Pay. Google Pay is also compatible with um, the Verney V2 Pro. Okay guys, so I think I've covered pretty much everything. The best rugged phone I have used. It has been brilliant and it's been a pleasure and quite a joy to test and use this phone over the past week. Again, camera is the only Achilles heel. It's quite poor. Any questions, please comment below guys. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe. And I also now, if you're sad enough to want to wear any merchandise, there's a link in the description below where um, you can get sort of geeky stuff merchandise, um, t-shirts, hoodies, uh, jumpers and uh, mugs as well. Oh, take a look guys. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.